Hello, I'm Lacey Sheldon. I am a librarian at Macintosh Memorial Library in Viroqua, Wisconsin. Um, thank you all for being here today to talk about the second annual Driftless Regions Dia de los Muertos celebration. That is a Mexican cultural and <laughs> educational event. And your leadership team is here today to talk with all of you wonderful volunteers uh, about what the event um, is going to be like this year and what some of those volunteer roles can be for yourself and your family, your children and uh, student groups as well. So let's take a moment here to say hello to Gabriela Marvan and then after Gabby, Joy. So Gabby, do you wanna give a little intro? Yeah, um, <laughs> hello everybody. I'm very happy to see a lot of folks here joining to the Segundo Dia de los Muertos celebration. Yeah! <laughs> I'm very happy to see familiar faces here and some uh, other people that I don't know, but I would love to meet you sometime in the Dia de los Muertos event. Um, this photo that you can see in the screen is uh, the ofrenda that we did last year. And the main purpose of the event is the ofrenda or the altar. And this is how we do every year in Mexico. And we wanted to share with the community of Driftless, Curio Driftless and, and collaborating with uh, Driftless Curiosity and Macintosh Memorial Library. And uh, we invite the, the community to bring a, even a flower or a fruit or a photo uh, um, remembering their uh, loved ones who passed away. So for us, uh, just to share like a very brief meaning, for us is not a sad thing. For us is remembering our loved ones with um, through their life, no? So, uh, and as well is uh, a time to share. All the fruits and meals that you can see in the ofrenda, uh, we believe that we are sharing with them in, in a way. A meal with them is uh, the flower, the yellow flower, the sempasuchil or the marigold. Uh, it's a path of aroma uh, that helps them to arrive to the ofrenda. So that's briefly uh, a thing. And every year uh, we offer uh, this altar to, to some people. So this year we are going to offer uh, this altar to the environment. Environmentalists that um, were fighting for keeping the monarch butterflies home in Mexico. And they were killed uh, um, during the last years. So we want to honor them. And that is our topic and our um, purpose of this event. So if you see uh, other elements of the monarch butterfly, is because of that and because also um, our ancestors believed that the butterflies were the souls of the people coming here to, the, to this plane. Um, so we can start for the second. Uh, I want also, sorry, I want also to introduce you um, to Joy Miller. She is a uh, the director of Driftless Curiosity. Uh, so this is an effort of um, the three of us and with the help of a lot of volunteers, this is possible to do it. Uh, uh, Lacey representing the library, Joy, Driftless Curiosity, and myself, the Mexican Folk Art Collective. So Joy, could you like to introduce yourself? Sure, thank you so much, Gary. Yeah. Abby, and thanks everybody for coming and meeting with us tonight and uh, giving your time and energy and creativity to this event. Uh, we're super grateful for um, this team. Um, it's a wonderful community collaboration and um, we were really fortunate to receive a grant from the Wisconsin Arts Board to uh, support this. So we're, uh, we're definitely grateful for that. 
um, and want to really do our best to put on a celebration for the community. Um, so the, the celebration happens at Key Maiden Farms. Um, that's our home farm. It's outside of Vital Corso. Um, we'll be hosting artists here at the farm and um, having uh, an event the day before um, as well, a marigold harvest and potluck for volunteers. Um, so there'll be two chances to come out to the farm uh, two days in a row and uh, help out with making this possible. Um, so yeah, a uh, quick note about Driftless Curiosity is um, we're one of the collaborators. Our mission is to deepen people's connection to the land through uh, uh, curiosity and social justice and the arts. So we really feel that this um, celebration is in alignment with our mission. And Gabby is also on the board of Driftless Curiosity. Um, and she and I and Lacey have been, you know, working really hard at this. And we hope that um, you guys are going to be excited and just really engaged by the um, presentation. And you, you'll go out and tell more people like, hey, I'm volunteering for this cool event. You should join me um, or at least come and attend. Um, so without further ado, I could maybe go, go to the next slide, Gabby. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. <clears throat> So here is the image of the event. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we, we uh, changed this year. Last year we did uh, another Katrina. Katrina, for those that doesn't know, it's an a icon in the Mexican folk art. Uh, it's an skeleton lady that is dressed. In this case, we use the monarch butterflies, as I mentioned before. And we did two different, um, two posters, one in Spanish and other in English uh, to be inclusive in this event. So this is uh, officially the presentation of the image. And uh, yeah, it's going to be at Kiwadin Farms. Uh, the event is going to be from 1 to 7.30 on October 8th. So save the date. And it's going to free outdoor event. Vendors of food and our vendors, the same artists, uh, the majority of them uh, are part of the Mexican Folk Art Collective. Oh, and they are going to be giving uh, workshops. And also they are able to sell their art. Um, our, our sponsors in the bottom, uh, we uh, wanted to say thank you to everybody that were um, generously giving us some of their time or their talent or their um, some budget to be possible, to make it possible. Thank you, Joy. So uh, this is in the farm, in Kiwaitin's farm, and this is uh, Sempasuchil cosecha. Sempasuchil is the flower uh, of the dead, or is the marigold, in, as you call here. And cosecha is harvest in Spanish. So uh, last year, this is a photo from last year, where we went uh, to do the harvest. So we will know, um, although we, we put uh, in the form that there is a team for harvesting, everybody is welcome to do the harvesting one day before the event. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit more about that, um, Joy and Gabby, the um, Compasuchil Marigold Harvest? Um, and uh, Joy had let me know that how many how many flowers did you plant for this year's celebration, Joy? Uh, Rufus and I and the farm team planted around five thousand flowers, <laughs> mostly marigolds and some other uh, coxcomb, uh, celosia, and, and there's other flowers too. But yeah, it was a step up from last year. We did around two thousand, so we went really big. <laughs> is amazing. Uh, we're so excited about that. Um, so as Gabby had mentioned, uh, 
and Joy as well has already mentioned this, but I want to make it really super clear. So the invite stands for everybody who's on this call and anybody who is watching this from home at a later date or who has signed up to be a volunteer. Um, the Kiwaden Farm Farms will be hosting a on Friday, October 7th, the day before the event. Uh, they will be hosting from five o'clock p.m. until 7.30 p.m. at the farm, a volunteer's, um, a volunteer's pot potluck. So we welcome everyone to come and bring some food to share. But one of the other main side goals of that is to really dig it, um, start to harvest all of these flowers. So it would be considered maybe like a work party with a volunteer um, benefits of um, sharing food together, um, cutting these marigolds, getting them sort of arranged, put into water so that they can make it through the night and then begin to be used the next day at the celebration. Um, also, we will be on that night at Joyce and Rufus's farm, um, passing out the memorabilia buttons that every volunteer will get going over any other questions or details and really just starting to get the event set up um, that evening. So again, that's Friday, October 7th from um, five o'clock until 7.30 PM for a volunteer potluck and um, harvesting these beautiful Campasuchil uh, marigold flowers. Thank you. Uh, Joy, do they need yes. like something special to bring that day like scissors? something uh scissors wouldn't hurt yeah that would be a, a good thing to bring i mean we have some here at the farm too but um depending on how many volunteers there are we scissors or like garden clips would be great okay thank you and also mentioning that you plant corn right yep there's corn planted <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's great that we are going to later in this presentation, the use of that corn. Yep. Uh, do you want to say anything about this, Gabby? Uh, well, this is a complete ofrenda that you can see. This is a finish, uh, how we had it. <clears throat> this year, we want to do as well. There is another team in the Describe it on the form. You will see the art flower. It, it referred to this one, and we want to add more of those flower uh, sempasuchil chains. So we will need also some volunteers to start with these chains, like, like maybe one week before or four, three days before, because that takes a lot of time. And we want to put like more chains, like hanging um, from the arc to the to the bottom that will be something that we want to do as new and also uh, we want to put an exhibition of the uh, Mexican decorator skulls that I'm doing a workshop on September 24 and 25 so uh, you are invited to it's through the Ripless curiosity and it's gonna be at the farm. So the purpose of this workshop is that we put uh, a wall of decorated skulls. And this is an Aztec arrangement that they used to put like the, the skulls of their warriors and um, in, in, a, in a wall and it's called a Sompantli. So, yeah, this is going to be kind of this similar, but these tiny things will be different and also the offering to the environmentalist. Okay, so here we can see some volunteers, Jesse, and I think it's Dana. Uh, they are putting the flowers together. Uh, they were about 10 or 20 volunteers in this ARC. Um, we hope we can get the same amount of volunteers doing this because it's a lot of work. And some of them were like even harvesting that day and bringing more flowers because they were not enough to have it in, the, in this ARC. This is Corazona. <laughs> <laughs> 
corazón. This is a uh, Katrina. Uh, this is the name of the uh, Kat no, how many feet? I just think my brain thinks just in meters. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can see the, the person in there, how tall is it? Uh, so I would be, well, this, this Corazon is now a youth initiative. We borrow it to them for their event. And in, in a change, they uh, keep it for during the year. So they are gonna bring it back to the farm sometime in September. Um, whoever wants to be part of helping me to put it together, um, maybe I'm, I want to retouch it and make it stronger. So I will be like sometime in the farm uh, one week before, and maybe also the day before I will be painting it. And I will like the team that is, wants to can be doing this and also at the moment of the event we're going to put it like up and so we need like five people <laughs> to put it up uh, but that could be at, at the moment of of the event and also some natural flowers and some uh, paper flowers to do that uh, so these paper flowers are going to be done uh, one week before in the library and also by some students of Jyoti Initiative. And well, one important thing that there are bees. So if you are allergic, please be aware of this. <laughs> and, <clears throat> but and we are going to have some uh, first aid uh, uh, things, right, Lacey? We'll have first yes. aid. Yes, lots of first aid. Uh huh. But if you have an EpiPen, if you have an allergy, you should bring your EpiPen. Yep, this is an outdoor event. And so if you choose to work on the flower team, please, um, please know that if you have an allergy or you swell after your bee, um, if you happen to be stung by a bee or bitten by a bug, please bring all of the necessary. Um, uh, you know, medical aid that you would you would need to stay safe and healthy. Um, also, though, yes, the event is going to be providing a very robust um, first aid station and also a calm area new to this year. And we can touch on that um, later on in the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So also for that act uh, activity, sorry, for the Corazona decoration and an ofrenda to do the change, you need to have like with you a thread and a needle and maybe scissors that is very helpful if you can bring like in your volunteer equipment that is very helpful yeah thank you Open arts that is this is alejandra she also is part of the mexican folk art collective and She's my sister. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, well, this photo is from Peter Cossat, uh, so it's awesome. Um, she will be dancing again, uh, Aztec dance. This year, uh, Julieta Zavala, she is also an artist from uh, Mexican Folk Collective, and she's uh, flying from Delaware. The grant let us pay her trip, and she'll be here. Uh, she will be. Uh, designing and doing the, the dress, Aztec dress for Alejandra's performance. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay, another important thing for the Dia de los Muertos is the papel picado that you can see in this image. Uh, we invite uh, everybody as well to the open studio on October 1st. So this is one of the things that you will be doing it. It's tissue paper with cuts and we can have some figures or as simple as you want. And the meaning of the paper picado is that we have to have the four elements in the, in the ofrenda. 
So this uh, papel picado, uh, it's the meaning of the, of the air. And yeah, so we put the decoration, some in the, in the entrance of the farm and some other papel picado at the ofrenda. And the signage as well, this is, oh, sorry, <laughs> I forgot about the signage. Mm -hmm. So the signage is um, something very useful for the people that uh, are like driving. And we need to put some signage in the way to arrive to the, uh, to the farm. And then once the people is in the farm, we need signage for the parking and for each of the workshops. And this, this is about signage. So one thing volunteers could do is help to post signs um, so that people can navigate the event. Yeah, so, uh, okay. So here are the workshops that we are gonna have. This is a photo of Jessica Coria. She's an artist that does works with corn husk. And the corn husk is, uh, is gonna be from those corn that uh, Joy and Rufus planted from, and that, at the farm. So this is amazing because it's like involving nature, involving like first the tree of, of the organization, but it's, it's involving also the community and also the arts, food and farm and nature and a lot of things and happiness mm -hmm. and and well it's open to all the community you can see here like kids and adults enjoying this activity and the workshop we have is corn host flowers uh, also, uh, we are going to have this done at the library uh, as well on October 1, so if you are interested to learn how to make sugar skulls, go to the library October 1st. Um, and those will be just made like the mold and at the event, they are gonna be decorated. So there is gonna be an artist leading this uh, workshop. Her name is Ceci Tejeda. She is from Milwaukee, and, but originally from Mexico. Um, then we are going to have a community mural. This mural is going to be as well inspired on the environmentalist and the uh, monarch butterflies. So uh, the name of the October one, yes, thank you. <laughs> there is a person who, who mentioned something that it's going to be October one, very excited activity, yes. <laughs> Uh, the community mural. This mural is going to be leading by an, a muralist, Mex Mexican-American muralist. His name is Julian Correa. And well, he's going to be in charge of the design, but the topic is, is this. And um, we are going to invite the people to participate and to paint it in, in order that they can feel that this mural is also part of everyone. So that's what we want. We want this event feel like it's for everybody. So and then the next tamal uh, demonstration from our friends Tortilleria Cepeda. This is the second year that they are going to be participating with us and we are very happy and very lucky to have them too. And they uh, explain to the people how they do the nixtamalization process to make tortilla. Yes, um, I think they are gonna, the tortillas that we are going to eat is from them, right, Joy? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So uh, the vendors will be using <clears throat> the, yeah, so that's also a very exciting, uh, a very exciting thing that it's like everybody's helping everybody and that that's great. Um, then the fireworks this year is going to be a, a new uh, work, workshop or activity, the fireworks by Dave, if you want to talk more about this, Joy. 
Yeah, um, so Dave Bex is our friend um, from Burn Burning Man. He's a pyrotechnics expert and a safety, um, pyro safety person at Burning Man. Um, so he's gonna be creating a Castillo style firework, I believe it's called. Is that correct, Gavin? Yeah, Castillo, he's gonna yeah. be. Yeah, I, so. I think that's the plan. <laughs> um, uh, so it, he's gonna try to do do like the traditional which are the spinning um, fireworks um, and that will be at the end of the day. So what uh, I think one volunteer job would be to help on the the safety team of the fireworks. Okay. You know, I notice now that I see Andrea in the public call Andrea. Uh, I sorry Andrea, I didn't grow the embroidery workshop there. Um, mm -hmm. Andrea is also uh, an artist from Mexican Folk Art Collective, and she uh, she does embroidery, and she'll be also having a workshop that day. So, if you want to help her that day, uh, she will be happy to <laughs> to have some help in there. Um, she also we um, we have. Uh, the luck to have Andrea as a volunteer last year. So, so as an artist giving this workshop. Thank you, Andrea. Yes, and Andrea and Andrew also came out and helped us in like an emergency marigold situation and helped us to plant marigolds and transplant them from the trays to the garden uh when we were in a time crunch so we really appreciate their help they helped on the marigold team last year as well and um it's awesome to have them jump in again and be a part of that so. yeah um, <clears throat> then we have the poetry we're still like um seeing some details of that uh, uh, it's not confirmed but we will see and um, then the story time from the library. Do you want to talk about this, uh, Lacey? Thank you, Gabby. Yes, story time um, is a children's circle that I'll be hosting. Um, and we read a book and it will be a, a couple books and bilingual books. Um, and I'm also looking for a uh, person to volunteer to host the story time with me. If that person um, does know um, and does speak both um, Spanish and English, that would be very helpful, but not necessary. Um, I really look forward to someone stepping forward to be um, that volunteer for story time with me. Thank you. Thank you. And also there is gonna be the Loteria game from the Consulado that I didn't put in there, but uh, Loteria is a traditional game kind of bingo, Similar, I, I had them. <laughs> uh, uh, well, that is a traditional and they are gonna bring some uh, cards and share with the community and you can be able to play some Loteria. Okay. Um, before the next slide, I just wanted to say one thing about the community mural um, that it, it, it will be painted on boards. Um, so it's not on a wall here at the farm, it will be on move, movable boards. So it will be also exhibited at the library as well as the Viroqua Food Co-op who uh, generously donated money towards the community mural. So yeah. All over town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you went with the painting of the boards, uh, I will be at the farm uh, on October 1st and um, uh, painting the Katrina and um, painting the boards. So if you want to help with that, go to the farm. I'll be there very happy waiting for you. Uh, <laughs> yes, here is a brush, here's a paint. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. So here we are seeing uh, Shayna's uh, work from last year. She is a volunteer as well, and she organizes corn um, dyeing with, um, with turmeric. And Joy knows better the story of this. Can you tell us? 
more of them. Yeah, so uh, it's really fun to be able to work with our produce in a, an artistic way, um, as well as, you know, feeding people. Um, to use this in the art is really awesome. So we collected corn husks and Shanna um, worked with her family, her children got involved um, and they used a natural dyeing process to color them a bright yellow for the corn husk flower workshop. Um, and we'll be doing a similar process this year. Um, Shanna has um, stepped forward to volunteer in the same way again. Um, and I will also, I'll be um, harvesting a few large bags of corn husks um, for the corn husk flowers. as well as for, um, and then we will also be dyeing a portion of them, uh, this bright yellow uh, natural dye with turmeric. Uh, so if you are interested in, in getting involved with that, you can let me know um, or let Shanna know. Um, I can't see if she's on the meeting or not, but um, uh, it would be great to connect with anybody who's interested in working with the natural materials in this way. Yeah, and um, the dress that Joy mentioned, the, the corn husk dress for, for Julieta, this is another dress. She'll be doing three dresses. One is the Aztec dance um, performance for Alejandra, and then it's gonna be, she's going to be making uh, two dresses for Katrina. So it's it, my, my sister will wear it as well, Alejandra. Uh, at the end, when the lighting of the ofrenda is uh, happening, she's gonna do her performance in front of the ofrenda, wearing the dress of corn husk from Julieta Zavala. Um, and she will be using as well corn husk. So, we, so that is an important preparation to have been um, before Julieta arrives, she will be arriving to Viroqua on October 5. So we will need the corn host before that time. And the corn host for Jessica Coria to do the flowers is also needed before the event. And the other preparations, uh, just as a reminder, is the sugar skulls, the papel picado, paper flowers, the prime board for mural, do signage for all the workshops, bilingual, and do signage for the road and parking. Yes, so um, if you haven't already decided, you can kind of start thinking about what um, your what piques your interest here of those jobs. And I'm gonna skip through this agenda just because it is uh, not up to date. <laughs> <laughs> So Lacey will be sharing an updated uh, itinerary because we've been moving things around mm -hmm. to, to. Is there anything else you wanted to say, Gabby? No, I just know if somebody has a question about this before passing to the agenda okay. or a comment. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, we can think on that for a second. Um, and we will also have a moment here where we can um, go over maybe more of a calendar with everybody too. Um, I'll type it here as we go so you can take notes because we've put out there a couple different really exciting things that are happening. So we'll be able to clarify those in, um, in a moment here too. But let's hop now um, into the event schedule. I'll go ahead and share it here with you. Okay, so wonderful volunteers arrive on, and this date is Saturday, October 8th, 2022. So this is the day of the event, yes? So we are asking that volunteers arrive on Saturday, October 8th at 10 o'clock in the morning. Everyone will be working on their tasks and preparing themselves for the celebration to begin at one o'clock. So between 10 a.m. and one o'clock, volunteers um, have arrived and we're all busy having fun and working on the flowers and the ofrenda, of course, and just in general, getting ourselves staged for the celebration. 
Uh, new to this year, we are offering a volunteer lunch at 11.15. Uh, the leadership team really um, felt that it was very important that we put a lot of focus on the volunteers and they're uh, making sure basic needs are met and that all volunteers and artists are feeling really well cared for um, before, before the event, um, at the event and after the event. So we're hosting a volunteer lunch. This will be provided for you. It is also why we have been asking for people to let us know if there are any food observances or um, requirements that you may have. Um, the details of the volunteer lunch are still coming together, but we know that there are going to be um, vegetarian options and um, options that also provide meat um, in them as well. So the event opens at one o'clock. Beginning at one o'clock, the ofrenda um, contributions by attendees will start to be added. Of course, the ofrenda is built throughout the duration of the event. Um, at 1.30, the Calaveras uh, workshop by Ceci will begin. That is the um, painting and decoration of everything for those sugar skulls that will be added to the ofrenda throughout the day. Um, the mural painting with Julian, as um, Joy described, the boards are going to be um, placed almost like tabletops. So people, all participants, all attendees can, can come through and add their contribution to it. And then it will be um, posted or exhibited um, throughout the community throughout the rest of 2022. At 2.30, um, Alejandra will be performing her um, The Aztec Dance. Um, if anyone was at the celebration last year, you'll remember this. This was such a wonderful part of the celebration as well. We are so excited to have her back to do this. Um, at three o'clock, the folk art workshops will kick off. There is Mexican embroidery offered by Andrea, the Nixtamal by Zapeda, and the Cornhusk flowers by Yessi. Um, so we're very excited for that. This essentially is these three artists um, having a station, if you will, and then the attendees can come and circle through and around the workshops and participate um, as they would like to with these specific um, art modes that they're offering. At 3.30 is the Loteria Games offered by the staff of the Milwaukee Consulate Office or the Consulado de Mexico in Milwaukee. Four o'clock bilingual story time for the children with myself and I'm also still looking for a volunteer to step forward to um, assist with the Spanish portion of reading the bilingual books. At 4.30, um, a poetry reading. Uh, more details on that are still coming together. At five o'clock, the, there's a um, commentario by the hosts, um, Julieta, the featured artist of this year's celebration and the consulate's office, 5.30, lighting of the bonfire. Six o'clock, the ofrenda candles will be lit. 6.30, Alejandra and her daughter Camila return to present the um, a Katrina performance wearing Julieta's corn husk dresses. Seven o'clock fireworks by Dave X. And at 7.30, the event ends. And at that time, we hope to click, click into cleanup mode. So I know I went through that very quickly. Um, thank you for hearing me out on that. It's quite a robust and so super, super fun day. Um, I wanted to add here a couple more details about some other um, opportunities coming up as well. Um, in September is Hispanic Heritage Month at the library. And we have um, two, four artists total from the Mexican Folk Art Collective presenting um, virtually online through Zoom on two Saturdays. So on September um, 10th, we have um, uh, Gerardo, is pre uh, presenting clay animals and um, Gabby S is presenting wood cuts. Then on September 24th, we have um, Gabby O presenting on sugar skulls and we have Oscar presenting on chinelo. So you'll see more information about that um, on social medias, which is super fun. Also on September 24th, Gabby is hosting the, um, Gabby, can you, and Ju, uh, Joy can speak more about that again. It's a paper mache workshop. 
Yeah, that is a paper mache workshop, and we are going to make uh, the creator skulls make uh, with modeling um, paper mache, and it's a two day workshop, Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to teach you how to do it from scratch. And the purpose of this is also you are going to be able to exhibit your piece at the Dia de los Muertos ofrenda. So we want to make a, a wall of decorated skulls. And there's registration required for this? Showing the end of it. Uh, yes. <clears throat> and there's a cost to it as well. So for people to be aware of that and they can direct themselves to Driftless Curiosity's um, website to find out more information, but in general, to make you aware um, that registration is required for that. And it's a part of Driftless Curiosity's educational <laughs> program, which is super exciting. And, um, but there, um, you know, there are some details to that. So you'll want to know before you pop up at the farm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but then we have um, Saturday, October 1st. This is a date that has been continued to be mentioned as well. And what's happening on this date from noon until five o'clock PM at the library is a open house, like an open art studio for this event. So you can consider this to be like the depot, if you will, this will be a time where you can pick up the Papel Picado and um, the, well, the tissue papers for it and um, the cutting boards and some of the knives for it or the tissue paper for um, the paper flowers and it's an uh, open space to be able to make the signage. And so it's a, uh, really where in five hours we can be doing a lot of things or you're welcome to take some supplies home and be able to, um, you know, make some of that signage and some of the decorations at home as well. And then Gabby mentioned that on the same date, um, she will be out at the farm and she will be um, creating some, uh, well, painting the boards out there and some other tasks are being accomplished as well. So if I can. Yeah, um, also, Lacey, I want to mention that some volunteers doesn't live here in the area. So some of, of the volunteers live in Milwaukee or in Madison or Iowa. I see Gloria over there, Mickey too. Mm -hmm. um, you are able to do like papel picado or paper flowers if you want and bring it the day of the event. Mm -hmm. Feel free to do it and, and do any preparations you want. If you have a question about how to do it, Uh, and we will let you know how to do it. There are some tutorials that we prepared last year and you can do it at your house and bring it with you. Great, I love that. Um, October uh, 6th and 7th, our featured artist Julieta Zavala will be at the library and she is hosting um, basically again some open um, studio time where she will be making her corn husk dresses. As Gabby mentioned, there are three dresses that she's making total. And so if you are interested in seeing Julieta um, basically do her thing and make all of these amazing dresses, you can drop by the library on these two dates to meet her, talk with her, see her um, art happen in the process of being made. So we're really excited to have Julieta on those days. Um, if you, uh, let's see, on the 6th, she is there from noon until 2.30. And on the 7th, Julieta will be there um, from 9 a.m. until 2.30 p.m. Okay, and then just uh, another fun thing to remind everybody about is on October, um, seventh as well. This is the Volunteers Potluck at Key Wade and Farm. Oops, sorry. <laughs> and this is happening from five o'clock until 7 30 p.m. It's optional, of course, but if you'd like to come, we'd be more than happy to have you. Very good. Uh, I would like also to mention 
that uh, this year we have the luck of having a volunteer joining to the photography and uh, audiovisual. So it's very important for us to document everything. Mm -hmm. Oops. So even if you work a video of yourself doing it, that will help us to get uh, like some grants for the next year or even to show the report for uh, this grant. And so Miki is, uh, it's over here, I think. So uh, Miki, would you like to say something about this, why, what you are inspired for and what you expect from everybody to do about the video or photos? Yes, absolutely. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, awesome. I'm uh, on the road, so I apologize if it's a little noisy. Uh, I want to thank you to all. I'm very excited to meet you all and have the opportunity to work together. Um, I thankfully met Gabriela at the uh, one of the art fairs on the square. It was really exciting, and uh, it really inspired me just getting to meet her and getting to see that our community is out here and we're doing stuff. And once I found out more about the event and what all it entails and how many people are actually willing to contribute, um, it really ignited a, a fire in me to recognize how important it is for all of us to learn and be able to participate in our ancestry, you know, and continuing this tradition and bringing that um, here to Wisconsin, even though, you know, our homeland is so far away, really um, inspires me to realize that our roots are wherever we are and in our hearts. So I really want to capture that. I think that is something really inspiring, not only to document right now in the present, but also for future generations to realize that uh, we never gave up our, our ancestry and our roots and we continue to move forward and bring love uh, to this to this country, to this land. And um, like you said, Gabriela, sharing, like it's, it's about sharing. And I think that um, in going and being able to document this, we can share this with even more people. Um, again, like use it to show what we did and use it to inspire in the future, as well as like for the people that aren't able to make it out, you know, having something tangible for them to see um, not what they missed out on, but what they'll have the chance to participate in next year. Also, I'm, I'm wanting to do video and photography. If anyone is willing to help uh, or participate or kind of coordinate, I think storytelling is the best way to uh, document photography and videos. So if anyone would like to help kind of come up with a narrative or a story um, about how we want to present the, the video and the photographs. That would be awesome. And then anyone willing to help in general, I'm happy to connect um, outside of this meeting or at a later time to see if anybody wants to help or how we can coordinate. I'm near the Madison area, but willing to travel uh, wherever I need to. That's all yeah, I got thank for you. you. <laughs> thank, thank you, Miki. Miki wanted to come to the Driftless area specifically on the uh, special dates. So um, whoever wants to join, especially for the dates where we are in different locations, already at farm that is on October 1st. And also Shana, Shana will be like working on the, uh, the corn host. So that will be like a very important date where we will need like more volunteers taking video and photograph for that. Um, thank you so much, Mickey, for your um, kind words and thoughtful words. And um, Gabby, also your, your sharing your response to that as well. Um, it's really beautiful and um, so excited to participate. So excited to um, see everyone here tonight. And um, in, I think we're coming to some of our final thoughts. Um, I did want to mention one additional thing and that is um, to, sorry, one second. Um, 
is for that any um, educators that may be watching this, whether you be a teacher or a librarian and you've um, heard about this, please feel free to reach out to me um, by email or by phone, because we do have some opportunities for classrooms to be involved in their classroom. Um, and we can talk about, I know some educators have already reached out to me and they're asking about um, transportation and bringing students to the event on the day of. And I just ask that they um, touch base with me and we will talk that through. I'm so excited that um, we're going to be having some more student groups be coming out. It's a very child and uh, youth friendly event and family friendly event. And we just want to, um, yeah, talk it through a little bit more beforehand. So um, my, uh, Office phone number is 608-637-7151 at extension five. So please feel free to reach out and we will connect. And I was going to ask Joy, maybe Joy, if you could talk a little bit about um, some of the parameters of the farm and some expectations about um, being present on the farm, some safety um, tips for us. Thank you. Sure, yeah. Um, just a few notes about the farm. We'll probably be putting up a few um, just like safety fences for areas that will be off limits to visitors. Um, just because as it is a working farm, there are um, dangerous things around heavy equipment, sawmill, um, stuff like that, tool areas um, that we'll want to um, close off just for safety. Um, also, we'll want people generally to kind of stay out of the gardens. Just um, last year, we had some plants trampled and stuff like that. And we just worked really hard at um, growing those gardens. And so we want to keep those um, just like off limits. <laughs> um, we will be, you know, in the in and near the sides of the gardens and stuff for um, for marigold harvest. So we just ask that people take care as they, they are uh, walking to and fro in those areas. Um, and just a note about like bees, or if you've got an allergy to bring an EpiPen. Um, we do ask that visitors do not bring their dogs. Um, there were a few that came last year um, and you know we do have dogs show up at the farm, um, but just as a general note to the public, um, we are asking no dogs. We've got livestock, um, farm dogs of our own, goats, chickens, free range, little chicks, uh, sheep. Uh, so if we, you know, we love your doggies, but if we could, if you could arrange to keep them at home, um, that would be best for this specific event. Um, if you are a farm for the event, that is an option. Uh, we've got campsites all around the homestead, um, tent camping, there's no electrical hookups or uh, water hookups. Uh, there is access to water, uh, access to hand washing, um, bathrooms will be porta potties. Uh, and so if you're interested in camping, please just get a hold of me. I'll put my email in the chat. It's also, you know, Facebook, uh, or, you know, set, feel free to send me a message on Facebook as well. If, if that's easy it's about visiting the farm. I think that's most there is a waiver um, that we'll have folks sign. Um, so if you're working the welcome table or just all attendees, um, our board of directors just for accountability is asked that visitors sign a waiver just in the unlikely, unfortunate case that something were to happen. Yeah. Um, so that is a part of it. And other than that, I just hope that we have great weather. Um, Lacey, did you want to mention the rain date if there is? Is that... Mm -hmm. We'll have that inf information forthcoming to everyone. Okay. Um, we are uh, basically at the time um, limit right here. I do see that uh, farm owner Rufus, do you have a question or you'd like to make a statement, Rufus? Hey, thanks Lacey. Um, I think when we're talking with, uh, in relation to volunteers, I do feel like the uh, parking mm -hmm. definitely needs to be attended to better. So I think if we can get a few specific people related to parking, um, I think that especially, I just feel like there maybe is gonna be more people. And so I think that's gonna be 
I don't know. I'm a little bit concerned about that. Just really having some, I mean, my mother spent four hours out there last year parking people and I guess she really liked it, but I, I, I don't know how much we can count on that happening. So I think I just feel like just being at other events um, that are, that really pay attention to that. I think that's really an important part that we kind of didn't spend much time paying attention to last year, which is understandable. There's a lot going on, but anyway, that's my two cents. Great. Thank you so much, Farmer Rufus. And um, yeah, definitely to expand on your thought there is, and this is a great call out for people to join the parking squad team. Um, we're really hopeful to have um, any people who are available to work on those shifts for the parking um, squad and to be um, of support of, of Rufus throughout the day as well. Um, so please feel free to sign up for that aspect of it. Um, yeah, and I think there are about 15 um, total um, volunteer opportunities. So continue to explore that. And thank you so much for everybody being here tonight. Um, I wanted to ask the leadership team here that you're seeing if there's any other um, very brief final last thoughts so we can stop our recording and then we can go into an off um, unrecorded well, section after our very final thoughts. There are some comments in uh, the chat. So, um, well, the, Rocio said that she can uh, help with reading in Spanish. Thank you. Uh, so, Rocio be able to give you all the information. Um, Margot said that she can help spread the word in La Cruz. So that's great, Margo. Thank you. If you can reach uh, Mickey, I will. I will give you her email, and you can contact her uh, directly. And well, we wrote in our chat our phone numbers and emails. And Gloria, also Gloria La Torre. Yes, right. She was our volunteer as well last year. She was with us, and you are from Iowa, right? Right, yeah, we know now. Sorry, sorry. We know now, and she's interested in engaging her English language learned students in possible making papel picado in our classroom. Thank you, Gloria. Yeah, there is a tutorial I can share with you how to do it. And um, Matthew said, I think Matt would love to help with parking. Alisa. Uh, Lisa, please. Uh, Joy, can you or or Rufus, can you put your? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Joy's Rufus and saying. Matt are buddies can, too, so they'll get together. Yeah. And uh, Shayna said, "How do we join? Sign up on the list of volunteers." Uh, this is an excellent question. Very, mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry with the internet connection. Um, thank you for this question. It's a very important question. So um, to let everyone know, you can please visit uh, Viroqua Library, Macintosh Memorial Library's website. Um, on, there is a tab on the header um, homepage that is for Dia de los Muertos celebration. Please click there. You will find a lot of the information that we covered in this meeting available there as well. And then there is a link for the volunteers questionnaire. And once you have a look at that, you'll be able to choose um, which volunteer position that you are most excited to be a part of. And then from um, fo a follow up to it is you will all start to be um, receiving emails, um, connecting you back to us and confirming your role and seeing how to move forward. So that is the best way to see all of these different roles and um, to read a little bit about them as well. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, final thoughts? I'm just going to say thank you all so much. This is super, super exciting. I'm so excited. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we are very excited. Thank you everybody for joining us. And we are very excited to have like the second annual Dia de los Muertos that started with an idea of doing our ofrenda last year. Um, we finished with this event and we're very happy with the results we had last year and we want 
to do it again, uh, especially I want to share with you a comment with um, one of the participants last year uh, was like telling, telling me that uh, she hadn't in all the life that she has been here, she moved from Mexico and she cannot come back to Mexico yet. So she says she hadn't lived in those years one uh, authentic celebration of Dia de los Muertos that she had been missed and she was feeling like in Mexico. So that makes me like, touches me. And I thought like, we need to, we need to continue doing this for that and for the next generations that wants to reconnect with their roots. So that is my personal inspiration for doing this. And I want to thank you. So, I, uh, and also Lacey for the hard work that we are doing together. I'm very proud of our team and our all the volunteers. It's very inspiring. Thank you. Mm, thank you. And a big thank you to um, our host. Ah, salute! And a big thank you to our um, host farm, <laughs> uh, Keywayden Farms, and Driftless Curiosity. And huge thank you to Wisconsin Arts Board. Um, also working with the National Endowment for Arts to be supportive of not only Dia de los Muertos celebration, but also uh, with the September Hispanic Heritage Month as well. And um, our, our featured guest artist, Julieta, Julieta Zavala. So thank you to all of them as well. I'm going to stop our recording.